Hi everyone from Singapore. Um, this a few hours ago, Netflix announced a slate of originals, 41 originals, um, including 13 new films, plus three films already on end 2021. That's Sorry, I'm not seeing, am I seeing Shristi? Ah, oh, there you are, Shristi, hi. Sorry, I'll start again. Th including 30 new films, that's three films already on N 2021, and 33 since the beginning of the year, plus 17 last year. I mean, that's a lot of movie mojo we're talking about. So I'd like to welcome Shristi Bel Arya, the woman behind Netflix India original movies for almost three years, coming up for a three year anniversary. Um, we'll be talking about where exactly this movie energy is coming from um, and some of the films that she, that she announced this afternoon. Um, thanks for joining us, Rishti. And Thank thanks, you. thanks Apex for putting on this panel. Yeah. Um, as I just said in my intro, you've announced a massive slate of, of 41. 13 of them are, are directly under you, um, plus three, plus 17 from last year. That's a lot of money, a lot of energy across a very broad range of styles. What were the considerations in going this broad? Uh, you know, Janine, thank you for having me. I'm, I'm really excited to be here. Uh, it's always a pleasure to be uh, at the video next. Uh, what we've been trying, we've always done at Netflix, and if you see globally as well, is that we try to be as diverse as possible in the kind of content that we are putting out. Right? We want to make sure that no matter what mood you're in, when you come onto the service, you get exactly what you need. So it's like having a companion in the content that you're watching. So when we, what we really look for is a lot of passion from the creators and authentic storytelling. Um, I'm just going to add a bit to that in saying that what we mean by authentic is not always something that's gritty or an underbelly or something like that, but it's true to the world that it's meant to be in. Right, so you could be doing a super sci-fi kind of movie or or, or a mythology film, and uh, although those rules don't apply, uh, the film is authentic to what it is. I think uh, when you're looking at why the creator wants to make a story, the passion just kind of translates. And if it comes onto us off the page, jumping at us, it's more more than just likely to come off onto our members as well. And Ultimately, what you want to do is to, you know, make sure that all our members enjoy themselves, you know, it brings member joy, it makes, you know, people feel, you get excited, you get frightened, uh, you weep, you laugh, and you just, you know, uh, we love content. So the, when you say not only the gritty underbelly, obviously those are the ones that you and other competitors have, be, have launched onto the global stage with. Um, what what's on the other in the slate that you announced today? What's on the other end of that? The happy, the happy, um, cheerful stuff. I know you've got. I think you have some comedy amongst the amongst the movie titles. Yes, we do. Actually, it's always uh, this. Uh, a lot of the gritty stuff, or what people believe to be the darker, grittier stuff, is a lot of the fan favorites. And uh, I think that kind of breaks across because, uh, as we say, your Netflix is not my Netflix. And depending on what it is that you like to watch, you get, uh, you know, the recommendations come to you with that uh, experience in mind as well. But now as people are trying more and more, as you've seen, you know, people are more curious about different stories, about different languages, uh, films coming from different parts of the country, from uh, outside the world during the pandemic. We've seen that a lot of people have tried a lot of different things. So now they're going to begin to see uh, what we're putting out as well. Uh, so far as even last year, uh, in 2020, we did have, uh, you know, small heartwarming films alongside the big ones. In fact, Nudo, which was our biggest comedy film last year, was uh, viewed by more than half our members. So, I mean, it was massive. And uh, if you see Gunjan Saxena, which was our most viewed drama, uh, you know, most loved drama, actually, I should say, uh, you know, is, is something that's not typically associated uh, you know, from the starting days. So we've seen a lot, but of course we also have uh, Rata Keli Hai, which was our noir thriller space with our uh, Nawazuddin Siddiqui moment, which was enjoyed as well. But then watching Nawaz in Serious Men, which was based on Manu Joseph's book, uh, you know, in a satirical take on the different uh, places that you could come from you know, the different advantages that you have and uh, by birth in this country, 
Uh, it was really gratifying to see that the audience just wants to see a really good movie, a good story well told with the right intention. So I think when we're looking, that's what we're looking for. On, on, I'll take that on. On the global stage, I mean, you ha you have a global canvas. So obviously, it's it's um, authentic India stories, but there is this global canvas that you're playing with. How far can you stretch genre and content boundaries? And what would you say is a perfect example, if there is such a thing, of a film that would never have been made if not for Netflix, and also of a film that managed to straddle that local and and um, international demand? Uh, well, what we have been seeing uh, a fair bit of is that uh, we've seen that a lot of our titles, uh, including some titles that are, li are licensed for us, have been popping in different countries. Uh, AK versus AK, which was our Christmas launch, uh, was uh, something that popped up in 40 countries. Uh, we've seen um, uh, this uh, Telugu film of ours called Ala Vaikuntha Puramalu, which uh, was uh, on the top 10 list in 13 countries. In fact, we've seen some of it on the unscripted side as well. And, uh, you know, with Bollywood vibes or Gunjan Saxena, which was, again, in a lot of countries, which was in over 13 countries itself. So there is a bit of uh, cultural exchange, if I may call it that, that has begun. And I think uh, a great ambassador, again, a Netflix film is uh, The White Tiger, uh, the excitement with which, uh, you know, the film has been received globally, which is an India story as well. Uh, but if I was to call out a film that I believe or have been told uh, is something that only Netflix could do, I would say it would be AK versus AK because it was a meta thriller where, uh, you know, the two, the protagonist and the antagonist played themselves from real life, but like hyper versions of it. And it was beginning to blur the lines of what was uh, happening in real life versus what happened. Uh, it was really interesting because our director of that film, Vikram Aditya Motwani, who also was a showrunner on Sacred Games and has made films like Lutera and Oran and uh, Trapped in the past, when he came to us with this material and we were like, how are you going to do this? Because there's so much of dirty laundry being washed in the <laughs> uh, in this title and which actor is going to agree to do this and which director is going to agree for this bashing that they did. But my God, the two AKs, they just took the opportunity with both hands and not just through the making of the film, but also when we were marketing the movie. And it was really a great high point for us uh, because that, that was the maximum we actually heard that just Netflix could do this. Um, another thing that perhaps um, net, there are only a handful of people can do is give local diversity that global platform. And I know diversity is a global theme that you are that you have absorbed and are making sure happens in your slate, in your cast and crew on the ground um, across everything you do. Talk to me a little bit about how you make sure that you are as diverse as you possibly can be. And I'm particularly interested in women filmmakers because we were talking a little bit earlier and you said 50% of a lot of the cast and crew and directors are, are female. So, uh, you know, this is a moment that uh, is, is something that we're very proud of here at Netflix India, especially is that 50% uh, of our slate last year was in fact helmed by either a female producer or female director. Uh, which is a highly unusual statistic uh, in this market. And actually, I would say to be fair in the global market as well. Uh, I don't, I wouldn't say it was by design. I think it's a little bit of the opportunity that women are feeling. It's a little bit of keeping ourselves open uh, to seeing what's happening. And if you truly want to be diverse, right, you have to show representation of half the population of the world. Uh, and not just that, it's also the gaze that they come in with. So if you see a female filmmaker like, say, Suni Tarapurwala, who waited 12 years after Little Zizu to make uh, um, uh, Ye Ballet for us, was telling a story about these two boys in, underprivileged, uh, in an underprivileged background, learning to do ballet based on a true story, if you please, with a crotchety old Israeli ballet teacher who comes in. And I mean, I, I would, I mean, if you haven't seen it, I, I think you'd quite enjoy it. In fact, Reed had called it out in one of his uh, the films that he enjoyed really watching and recommended uh, earlier this year, uh, last year, sorry, in 2020. Gosh, it's been a while. And uh, at the same time, you see a film, uh, first time filmmaker like Sharon Sharma, 
who who's you know he's making his first movie and he's making it about a female protagonist based on a real life uh, air force pilot and he captures the nuances of a father daughter relationship with such sensitivity that you just you know wonder where it's coming from so i would say it's not just in seeing the protagonist which by the way across films and series was a 50 50 split uh for for women and men but you also see the gaze that they take it's that moment in time that they are and you see that represented so you know you have the opportunity of seeing yourself represented the, your people represented or to be transported into a world which could be aspirational or terrifying but again like adds to the kind of choices that you would want to make and and i think that's that's the opportunity of being on a service like netflix You've also been extraordinarily kind, as you said, to a few fem- a few first-time filmmakers. How are you finding the access to a much broader, a much uh, a much bigger opportunity? Has changed the um, production environment. Ties into another question I want to ask, which is how has your background as a producer in a previous life informed what you do and the opportunities you give to people? You know, Julia, I'm just going to. uh um, just say one thing it's it's people have been really kind to bring their stories to us first that they choose us is something that uh, we feel amazingly privileged about it, it's an uh, you know they trust us with their you know with with their deepest dreams and uh, that's huge for us and it's really encouraging to see so many female storytellers whether they're writers or directors or producers or actors or in many many capacities we've just um uh we've just got a new first time female dop shooting in this grueling film and it's really nice to see all of them come forward and you know trust us to be able to bring their vision onto a larger global platform uh but yes as a producer i mean i've been around uh, around for a while now uh, i think since the dark ages when we used to come <laughs> you know i feel as old as the hills uh-huh. but it's been incredible to see this this journey of the entire ecosystem and uh, it's great that netflix as a company is so invested in bringing best practices to wherever we go and the one thing that i found amazing when i moved right in you know when you're working on the outside as a producer you're looking at things from a particular lens and you think that you know on the other side of the table everything is so soft and cushy and there are no problems and if they like your face they're going to do it and if they don't like it they're not going to do it but when you sit on the other side if you start to if if you continue to remember where you came from that's i think the biggest thing you can do and it was so wonderful for me when i put the netflix hat on to find that here is an entire company that believes in the creatives that wants to give people the opportunity to display their creative excellence so to empower people with the means to do it and to genuinely want to do it you know i think it it couldn't have gotten better for somebody who's a former producer in another life uh you know i kept waiting that somebody's going to tell me ah don't bother with this oh you don't have to talk this one and everybody was like you have to read and listen and watch everything you can because you don't want to lose out on the next great work that the director is going to do or the first great work that they're going to do and that's an incre- you know it's mind bending do you miss that life that old life on some days yes <laughs> i miss uh, i miss being on set sometimes uh, to be very honest with you and and i have of course i i know a lot of uh, the filmmakers um you know and and sometimes they're really mean to me janine can i please complain <laughs> yeah, can't complain away. Go on. They call me and they say, "Uh, oh, we just finished the recce and we're all like going to get a beer together, but you're sitting in office." And I'm like, "Yes, I am. No, I'm not on outdoor." But uh, you know, I miss that, but I also I'm deeply deeply grateful for the opportunity because there was no way that in that capacity I would have ever been able to do the kind of volume or to be able to empower so many people. in my own little way to you know make their movies i mean things so you joined netflix almost 3 years ago as as you said um a lot has changed in the last 3 years i mean there's a lot more players there's a lot more money and energy going into premium drama which is a 
and especially series. I mean, Bollywood has also changed significantly in the last three years. And I think that is because of the streaming platforms. But the Netflix way, if I can put it in inverted commas, I mean, Netflix has a specific, specific tech spec, specific way of doing things and processes that don't always translate from, some people have a difficulty translating from domestic to global. And it stretches and challenges existing production infrastructure and reshapes the entire process. What kind of resource have you put into re-engineering re the local filmmaking ecosystem? And how far do you think you've come and how far do you think you have to go? Uh, that's a great question and it's really complex and I have a lot of cross-functional partners internally who contribute a lot to this. We've been doing um, we've been doing workshops with uh, you know global players to come in and talk, especially on post production, best practices for that, and VFX and uh, storytellers, writers to kind of work on writers' rooms. Uh, so we try to bring it in. I, for one, always believe that we have tremendous talent in India, and what we need is a little bit of channelizing. And I feel that that is our role as the Indian executives in Netflix to kind of marry the ecosystem. We already have the talent and we have the storytelling and we haven't necessarily had access or understanding. And if there's anything you know about Indians, we can adapt. And I don't think that there's anything that anybody is doing in the world that, you know, we can't get our heads around. So sometimes it's a little uh, challenging because we are a very big film industry and uh, we have successfully delivered so much. And, you know, there, there is a thinking of if it ain't broke, why fix it? But I think growth and, uh, you know, moving forward in life is something that we all believe in and we all have a legacy of film and we have a tremendous future as Indian filmmakers. And once that clicks, I've seen, uh, you know, a lot of people, they take to it once you understand why. And I think that job probably comes on us. And what's been super gratifying is to have seen that, you know, people have come in and done a film with us. And then when they're doing something else theatrically or they're doing, you know, whatever else that they want to do, they actually try and use those practices in their own system. So we've had like callbacks saying that, oh, you know, can we use that format that you did? Or can you introduce me to so-and-so? And that's the beauty of all the cross-functional parties as well, because whether it's production management or it's post-production or VFX or production finance, they're so happy to share. Because, you know, this is not something that is going to happen in isolation. This is something that an entire ecosystem has to believe in and move forward. And there's no reason why we shouldn't be delivering at the quality uh, as the rest of the world. God knows we can do it. Are you doing it? How far do you, how far do you think you have to go? You know, Indian original Indian content started just about three years ago, yeah. actually. Five years ago we came in. So I think uh, I've seen people uh, pivot really quickly. Uh, in a lot of things, especially with the people who are doing a repeat job with us. Uh, and uh, I would say that one never says that you're quite there because that's the end, you know, and stillness is the end of growth. So there's a long way to go. But I would say that for the partners, I would say about a seven on 10. And for myself, I would say maybe a six. <laughs> for to be a seven. Hard taskmaster, and we have a we have a few more minutes. What's yeah. your biggest? What's I, I don't want to talk about mistakes. I'd rather talk about the learnings. What's the biggest learning you've had in your three years at um, Netflix? I think the biggest learning has been that people, you know, there's this, this quote by Orson Welles that I have now on my uh, phone as a screensaver. It says that uh, there's nothing that people don't understand. What's important is to interest them, and then they understand everything. So I'm paraphrasing, it's not accurate, but I think that's been, become a mantra for me. Uh, I think that expectation that, oh, people don't get this or people won't get that, uh, that no longer stands for me. Uh, creatively, in terms of the movies that they watch or the processes that they can follow, there's so much that we can learn. We just need to get a buy-in at every level and they're in. Great. Well. Wishing you lots of luck. I think we've come to the end. I, I'm, I'm not getting any signals, but my clock tells me we're at the end of the session. I think we could possibly talk all night. But if you could, um, if we could close with, with the question about winning, what, of this slate, what, what, when we come to the end of this, because I understand that you're not actually finished commissioning for this year, that the, 
that 13 plus three could actually turn into a lot more. What at the end of this year will look like a win for you? How will you end the year thinking, I did it? No, I, I'm not the kind of person who's going to end the year saying I did it. But what would make me very happy. You did something amazing. Okay. <laughs> is, uh, no, what would make me really happy is that, you know, that Netflix India is a definitive home film. And, uh, you know, as the opportunity of telling diverse stories and people coming and sampling all of that and knowing that when they come onto Netflix, they're going to find the next favorite film there. That would make me very happy. Great. Well, on that note, Srishti, thank you very much for joining us. I look really forward to meeting you in person at some point. Yes. Um, yeah. And thank you again, Apex, for hosting this session. It's been really interesting. Thank you, Janine. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. Bye. You too.